Black Geek here, welcome back to a brand new video and today we're continuing the Doctor Who Modern Ranking series or Series 6. I promise the next video won't be a Doctor Who ranking, I, I, I promise, pinky, pinky swear. The Series 6 was the second series for Stephen Moffat as showrunner and Matt Smith's second series as The Doctor. Now, I've always had a bit of a love-hate relationship with Series 6, it's a weird one, yeah, I've always had a love-hate relationship with it, but because when I was younger I used to not be too keen on it. But as I've got older, I have grown more of an appreciation for it and I've started to like it more as I've got older. Now it's not perfect, it's not a great series, there are quite a few bad episodes in the series and the whole story arc is a bit of a mess, it's quite convoluted and complicated and hard to follow. But it does have its you know, pluses. It looks incredible, it looks really sort of cinematic. There's quite a few episodes that I do like as well and what I will never ever take away from series 6 is its ambition. You know, Stephen Moffat really tried to take risks with the series, you know, splitting the series up into two parts, the whole stuff with the story arc, you know, even if it didn't necessarily work, Stephen Moffat was trying to do something different, and I always respect that. So, we're going to be ranking every story from the season from worst to best. Enjoy. Number 11, The Wedding of River Song. This is just a terrible story and it's such a baffling, infuriating and disappointing series finale. The first half of the story makes absolutely no sense, like it's all that time's gone wrong, but it just, it makes no sense. And because of how the series arc was so complex and so overly complex, having this story be overly complex was a bad move. But the thing that really gets to me is how it resolves. The Doctor and River getting married. Just why? I don't like the Doctor being romantic. On. And this is worse than the Tenth Doctor and Rose. Yes, it's worse than that. Like, do they have to get married? No, they don't. They could have. It, it just frustrates me to no end. And then going ahead and retconning the Doctor dying on the lake in the opener. It just makes the series feel just completely pointless. And... You know, and it just, it puts a dampener on everything else in the story. Not that it was any good for me, really. Number 10, Let's Kill Hitler. You know how on YouTube you've got, like, clickbait videos with, like, really extreme titles and thumbnails? This is basically Stephen Moffat's clickbait episode of Doctor Who. I mean, he, Hitler just gets shoved in the cupboard. He's barely in the episode for, like, five minutes. So, the the title is just complete false advertising. And then you got the idea of the Tesselector, which is like, you know, like little people in this spaceship, and it's an alright idea, but because of what happened with the finale and how it was, it makes me feel cold towards the stuff with the Tesselector. And then you get the twist that um, Mel's, the incidental character, Amy Rory's friend from their childhood, is secretly River Song. Now, when Mel's is Mel's near the beginning of the story, she's such a smug, unlikable character. And then when she regenerates into River, I've got to say this is River's worst episode. Like, all the flirty dialogue, it's just... Moffat, calm down, alright? Calm down. Number nine, The Curse of the Black Spot. I don't know how it's possible to make pirates boring, but they somehow managed it. This is obviously a filler episode, but there's just... It's just void of any anything interesting, really. Whether that be the plot, the characters, the monsters, it's just boring. And also in the story, you get the trope of it's not actually, you know, a ghost, it's aliens, and they end up on a spaceship, and it's just boring. I, I just really don't enjoy the story. I can give it a couple of things, though. The sets are quite cool, you know, the pirate ship. And Matt Smith's energy is obviously fun to watch, you know. He can save some of the worst episodes. Number eight, Closing Time. Easily my least favourite Sideman story in Doctor Who history. Yeah, I know I did praise The Lodger um, from Series 5, you know, as it was quite a fun one. And Matt Smith and James Corden's chemistry do, you know, they are still fun to watch. But... Do we need to see The Life of Craig again another year in a row? Really? I don't know, just the humour isn't that funny in this one as it was in The Lodger. And my god, the way they treat the Cybermen in this, Jesus Christ, it's appalling. First of all, the, them hiding underneath the shopping centre, is that really the best you could come up with? That's just not a very inspired setting. 
and the way they get defeated by love at the end really agitates me like they nearly converted craig which also doesn't make sense like they, they they're just putting the suit over him like that does not how it works but then but the fact that he gets undone from hearing a baby crying the power of love ending is just so bloody agitating it's just oh the cybermen deserve better number seven the rebel flesh and the almost people Again, this is a bit like Let's Kill Hitler, where it's trying to introduce something for the ser- for the sake of the series arc, in this instance, the the flesh and the gangers, but doesn't tell a really interesting story. I mean, it could have worked, but it just doesn't. It's dragged out for two episodes. The first part is just an absolute snooze fest. And the second part, it does get better with like the two Doctors, that's pretty fun to watch. But yeah, it's just really boring, the characters are dull, the setting is just drab, it's so grey. And just not fun. The CGI looks really bad in parts. And yeah, I, I just don't have a good time watching it. Although it does have a great cliffhanger which leads spectacularly into A Good Man Goes to War. Number six, Night Terrors. Now, Night Terrors is an odd one because it's slap bang in the middle of the list. And, you know, it's a more standalone story, which I think works in its favour. You know, it's not bogged down in anything. It just tells its own story. And it's a story that I quite like. I think it's a nice blend of Russell D. Davis' more contemporary stuff and Stephen Moffat's more fantastical fairy tale stuff. I think the dolls, the paid dolls, are really creepy. And uh, you've got a nice guest star in Daniel Mays, who's pretty good in this, I think. Yeah, the child actor is really bad, but that's my only real drawback of the story. I just think it's a nice, sort of light hearted story, which I can just enjoy. Number five, The God Complex. I think this is a really good story and it tends to get quite overlooked and it should get more love than it deserves. Now on the surface it does seem just like a generic run around in like an 80s hotel. But to be honest I quite like that. I think the Minotaur is really creepy and quite, you know, quite weird and quite, yeah, quite creepy. And I do like the 80s hotel setting, very much reminiscent of The Shining. But that's not really what the story's about. It's more about the Doctor and his God complex with like the universe. And the fact that this is all like a a simulation, like a matrix sort of thing, is really cool. And even though it wouldn't stick, Amy and Rory's exit in this is pretty good. Number four, The Impossible Astronaut and Day of the Moon. Now, I really like the series opener, and it's really, you know, being two parts, it's a really sort of, it's a proper sort of bang to kick off the series. Having the Doctor dying here really works. I mean, it doesn't work in other stories because it's like an overused trope, but this is the first time they did it, so it works here, so I'll let it pass. It looks incredible, the TARDIS team are great, as have some great characters like, you know, Richard Nixon, he's a pretty good historical figure in this, and you've got Canton, who's like the FBI agent, he's really good in this, and it's just a really interesting story. The historical setting, the silence, they're a really good monster, the the timey-wimeyness of it, it just really works. Number three, A Good Man Goes to War. First of all, the title of the story is great. Second of all, the story itself is great. It's a proper culmination of everything that we'd seen in the Matt Smith era. You know, we've got so many characters, like the TARDIS team, obviously, but you've got Vastro, Jenny, Strax, Dorian. Even Danny Boy shows up from Victory of the Daleks. Like, it's it's epic, and it's proper edge-of-your-seat television. The Headless Monks are really creepy, and the way that this organisation sees the Doctor, and, like, as this warrior who needs to be taken down it's a really interesting way of looking at it and it properly brings out matt smith's dark side and oh my god the tension throughout the story is genuinely nerve-wracking at points it's that good number two the doctor's wife the first of two stories in doc two written by neil gaiman this story is just brilliant the idea of the tardis being inside of a human body and so that the tardis can actually interact with the doctor properly is brilliant stuff matt smith and Durant, saran jones really they they're really good in it and it's genuinely lovely to watch especially when the end like it gets quite emotional the stuff of amy and rory being like tormented throughout the tardis by house the villain is really creepy stuff the house is actually a really creepy villain where you know michael sheen does a really good voice performance and it's just such a great story every time you watch it number one the girl who waited this story is just brilliant and beautiful. The whole idea of this planet being quarantined because of an alien virus is pretty topical now, and it's still quite a cool idea. And the whole thing of Doctor and Rory get trapped in one time stream and Amy in the other is another great idea. The hand robots are quite creepy and how sort of innocent but deadly they are. 
And the main thing that I love about the story is the emotional stuff. It is genuinely emotional with Amy getting left behind for nearly 40 years. It's heartbreaking to watch. It's a really good character piece on this TARDIS trio and by far Rory's the best episode. Definitely. While it's not quite as good as Vincent and the Doctor with its emotional stuff, it comes down near close and it's kind of what saves Series 6 for me. (laughs) 